Kevin, when you look back on 1984-85, what sticks out about that team? I know there was many accolades, many records. You guys were defending cup champions, and then you guys go out and do it again. What do you are most fond about back then? Well, the repeat, uh, you know, I think we, there's still some questions as to how good we were, even though we'd won the cup the year before. So you, you have to go out and repeat. And, and uh, um, you know, we made, I think we opened up the eyes to the hockey world at, 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 at that point. Like during the, even the early 80s when the Islanders were winning and we were coming up and we played them twice in the finals, I don't think we really got the credit we deserved. So I think the 84-85 team really solidified that. Uh, when did you realize that it's going to be harder to repeat? Because I, I think it was in your book, you said that uh, Billy Carroll came over from the Islanders and he said, you guys have another thing coming as defending champions. Did that kind of open everyone's eyes up? Yes. Um, during the season and you know whenever you're uh, you're at the top or near the top or expected to be at the top certainly everyone's gunning for you so it's it always makes it more difficult of a season or uh, even just from game to game so that's one of the things that Billy Carroll brought to our attention when he when he came to us and um, but I think it it really uh, the fact that although it was a difficult season it wasn't probably as diff difficult as we thought it might be because, and it's just a testimony of how good the team was. I mean, we had, you know, we won all the individual awards. Uh, uh, we romped through the season. I think the, the Flyers actually had more points than us, but, um, you know, we had a great record. And it's, it's, it's no wonder that that 84-85 team, you know, was voted the, the top team of all time because it was a pretty darn good team. Well, absolutely. And it, what's interesting, talking to uh, players from that era on those Oilers teams is, even though the fans recognize this team as the best Oilers team, the best hockey team in the last hundred years of the NHL, when you talk to you guys, there's some debate amongst which team is actually the best Oilers team. 87 comes up a lot, 88 comes up. Uh, in your eyes, which one was the best team? And why do you think there is that uh, possible disagreement amongst the group? Well, we can't dispute with the fans. You know, they voted 84, 85, so we're going to go with I that. I mean, the uh, records themselves yeah. kind of dictate that too, but... But having said all that, certainly as the process was going on for the voting, uh, I remember talking with Wayne Gretzky and we both agreed. We thought the 87 team, uh, the 87 Cup team was was the best team, just in terms of the... the uh, the players that we had and, and uh, what have you. That was Paul Coffey's last year in Edmonton. And, you know, we had, uh, we had a lot of offense. Uh, we had more offense on the back end because we still had Ray Oritzelayan in back then. And then that's when Glenn made the trade for Kent Nielsen. So he really added another top six forward to, you know, an already potent offense. But, you know, you can't argue with 84, 85, uh, two solid lines, two very useful uh, lines on the, on the bottom half of the lineup. And then, six defensemen that had played and won the cup the year before they you know nothing had changed the same si group of six there with were still fairly young too led by of course Paul Coffey and he won the Norris that year and and then two great two great goaltenders I saw that both goalies had votes for the for the goaltender of the year that year so I'm, I'm sure that's pretty rare that both goaltenders on one team get voted for the top goalie yeah it was an amazing roster what's it like celebrating and, and having all these reunions, because I know we've had some tremendous ones, and uh, this one kind of kind of comes up. What's it like getting back together and, and having the group together? And, and do you foresee a lot more of these happening, or could this be kind of the uh, the the cherry on top, if you will? Yeah, the swan song. Yeah. I, I think it's probably the swan song. We have had a lot of them, but they're good. Let's face it, the the, the, the that era was, you know, uh, arguably some of the greatest hockey ever played. Certainly now the greatest team ever assembled, um, you know, two of the greatest players of all time. And then, you know, guys like, you know, Curry and Curry and, uh, sorry, Coffee and Curry and, and Fear and Anderson, their place in the Hockey Hall of Fame, Glenn Sather. So many great things to talk about. Um, so the, the, you know, justified in having all these events, right. but, I, I, but I think this is the last one. I don't think... I don't know what else we can think of now. You know, I don't think right. we're going to be celebrating the 87 Cup and the 88 Cup. <clears throat> and quite frankly, we wouldn't be celebrating the 84, 85 Cup other than the fact that the fans in the centennial of the NHL and they voted on this team. 
being the greatest team of all time. Absolutely. Uh, Kevin, certainly a pleasure talking with you. Thanks for this. Yeah, Tom, my pleasure.